when the ghosts and goblins come out at night and spooky creatures in their haunted machines race through the night. While some are hoping to find candy bars in their trick-or-treat bag, we just want tickets to the Modifieds at Thompson. There are no scary creatures here, just dedicated race fans, anxiously awaiting one more green flag to watch the five-time champ, Doug Kobe, battle the newly crowned titleist, Justin Bonsignor. The NASCAR Wheelin' Modified Tour is ready for the final event of the 2018 season. The Sunoco World Series 150 comes your way from Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. Hi everybody, Ralph Sheen, Ray Evernham, and Derek Pernisiglio set to go with the final event of the year. Fall has settled into New England and Ray, and it's a gorgeous day for racing. Yeah, buddy, when you see those blue skies and those people wearing the hoodies and toboggans, that means high speeds, especially at Thompson. And you can see we're just about 65 miles south of downtown Boston. All right, Ray, well, this championship is settled, but still Kobe trying to hold off Salamito. Yeah, we thought they were gonna have a battle for the championship. Little did we know that battle was gonna be for third place. Well, there will be a lot of stories coming out of the pits today and covering all the action down track side for us is Derek Pernisiglio. Ralph, it's just another race. At least that's what the consensus is around the garage. And sure, it's the last race of the season here at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park for the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour, but everyone is going into this as if it was another race on the schedule. The championship has already been decided. There's no points title that's on the line, so everyone just wants to be able to compete and run the best as they can tonight because they've got all winter to rebuild. Ray Modifieds and Thompson go way back in the day, but let's go back at least to 2013, fall of that year, and the Modifieds taking the green once again. Hey, the 52 is Doug Kobe. Yeah, his last the car. ride that day, huh? <laughs> oh, he's inside it, side by side with the car. He was about to drive. And here's Rowan Pennant in the 93, getting inside of Donnie Leah. You know, the names have changed. A lot of the car numbers are swapped around, but yeah, as we see Pennant right there, Good run, takes a win, takes a win, but the championship winner, that guy right there, Ryan Priest, now moving up to the big show this year. Looking forward to seeing Ryan in his cup debut there for a full season. Here's a look at the winners this year, a season just dominated by Justin Bonsignor. Seven wins so far, amazing. What an awesome season. Derek? Ralph, the Gershaw Motorsports number 21 of Ronnie Williams takes the pole here at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. He had the pole at the icebreaker. And is it because of these Connecticut tracks that you race on, the experience is why you got the pole here today? Yeah, um, it's definitely cool racing here at the Connecticut uh, tracks and being here at the World Series to get the pole. We got it at the icebreaker, didn't lead a lap, so hopefully we'll go out today and have a solid run and hopefully lead some laps. What's going to be the hardest part about today? It's the last race of the season. Everyone knows that they can rebuild over the year, and there's no real championship on the line. Is it a case of everyone just going for it? Yeah, and you can look at these guys around me. You got Priest, uh, Bonsignor already clinched it, and you got Kobe. So there's some good guys behind me. Um, Hopefully we can hold them off for a little bit and uh, come out on top tonight. Ronnie Williams is going to bring the field to green tonight in the Gershaw Motorsports number 21. Well, that green flag is coming just moments from now on the other side of this commercial break as we get ready to go racing with one of the most highly anticipated events of the year. The season finale at Thompson. It's going to be a good one, Ray. Great field of cars, great weather, Ralph. We'll throw that green flag right after this. NBCSN is here in New England, Thompson, Connecticut. The Sunoco World Series 150. And Ray, you and I both love this racetrack. We really do. It's got some character. You know, it's a little bit of age on it. But corners are a little bit different. Tires are going to be important here today, Ralph. Lots of drivers with a shot at the win, but can Justin Bonsignor get one more, Derek? Well, Ralph, our Who to Watch driver will be our champion, the Phoenix Communications sponsor number 51 of Justin Bonsignor. He has swept all the races here at the 
Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park, winning the icebreaker. He also won the two scheduled races earlier this year, and now he's going to try to sweep the entire season and win the World Series of Speedway Racing here at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. They've had great runs so far this year, seven wins total. The championship they locked up at the Stafford Speedway, so we're going to watch Justin Bonsignor because all he has to do is go for it and try to win the race tonight. Ralph, a great field. Look at that starting grid. I'm going to tell you, you know, look at Ronnie Williams. What a blistering lap he set for the pole. But, you know, you look at Chase Dowling and Ryan Priest, the guys that are right up there. You know, Kobe. Look at that, look at that top six. Pretty stout bunch. And I've been watching Burt Myers the last few weeks since he's kind of ventured up north for a few runs. He's really been consistent on a lot of racetracks he doesn't know very well. Yeah, and then we got Kyle Bonsignor back there, Justin's cousin coming off of a big win at Stafford Motor Speedway, the young rookie from New Jersey, Blake Barney there in row 12 in car number 14. And this event, Ray, is kind of, and wow, look at the back Whoa, qualifying wow. effort with Timmy Salamito, too. Not the year that. Timmy's hat wanted to, definitely not the year. T Timmy could use a good run today. He really needs to make something happen today to end his year on a high note. He's got a long way to go to do that. You can see the leaves are changing colors, but here's a color they all know, green, as we go racing at Thompson. Down to turn one, and Priest getting a, a lead from the bottom there. Ronnie Williams chose the top, which we've seen been the, the, the groove to go to take the restart, or take the initial starts on even, and, and Priest gets by him, wow. That shows, whoa, whoa, we've got cars contact. Did you see that? Contact we sure there, do, Ralph. right up there. Somebody hard in the wall. Turns one and oh. two. Oh, Timmy Salamito caught up in this wow. one, along with Gary McDonald. Oh, and then one of our onboards, not, not what uh, Timmy need. Hope Gary's all right. Good. Hard contact there, wow. Hard contact with those cars. See them both moving around in the, let's see if we can see what happened here. Oh, it looks Timmy went up in. I don't know if something happened to make him go high like that. Let's see. Uh, got the in-car. Hard to tell. Hard to tell if there was contact in the back, uh, you know, something, or whether the car just got loose. Hard, hard to tell. Let's see. Another view. He might have just gotten loose getting in the corner there. Very easy to do at uh, very easy to do at Thompson. Wow, it, it, uh, t it Timmy's had a tough year. Well, let's hear from the man himself. Is Derek caught up with Timmy when he got out of the car? Well, you can see the star at number 16 being brought in on the double hook. Timmy Salamito, obviously with a very tough year this year. It's just just a period on a really hard hard season for you. Yeah, that was my fault. I shouldn't have been that aggressive that early with uh, those guys back there. Um, but what are you going to do? Uh, just one of those years, just uh, take the winter off and hopefully uh, make it better. That's all. Uh, apologies to the 26 car there. Just got into turn three too hard, and those guys, you know, aren't obviously running the same speed, so it's tough. Um, but thank, uh, thanks to Starrett Tools and everybody involved, and uh, we'll come back next year and hopefully have a better year. Timmy Salamito ends a very, very hard season for him and his Starrett number 16 team. Well, he knew that initial start would be a good opportunity to gain some ground, and he went for it. Yeah, and, and you know, I really like it when a driver mans up and says, hey, you know, that one's on me, and apologize to the other guy. And, you know, unfortunately, that is racing. We're going to go racing when we come back right after these words. Stay with us here on NBCSN. Well, here we go. Waiting on the flag to get back to racing here. Priest has chosen the outside here. Let's see if it works better for him. Uh, that did on initial. He starts got Chase Dowling inside. Him. Good clean start. Kobe's showing a little bit of that strength when he dominated and swept all the races here. Here's Sapienza in the 36. Take a few minutes for a few laps for these tires to get warmed up in these cars with the cold temperatures, 55, 60 degrees. So, well, it'll take a little bit of time. And once they get going, you know what? That may have been what caused that accident that we saw with Timmy Salamito early. Tires just being a little bit cold. On board the champ.
both Priest and Kobe working the top there. Boy, you see those big tires leaving those black marks, Ralph. And the blacker that track gets, the more it changes. Kobe running a little bit of a different paint scheme this weekend. But still a familiar two on the door. And Ray, this modified race here at the World Series is uh, the highlight of a big weekend here at Thompson. Several different classes of cars run. They call it the World Series you know, for that reason. People come uh, from the open wheel community to run uh, cars as well, as well as the late models. They get a ton of cars. It is fun. Been there and, and able to compete a couple times. And again, just love this show. But well, we see uh, Kobe starting to put a little pressure on Ryan Priest there. Well, this is part of the show the fans are hoping to see. Yeah, well, Although I think many thought it'd be Bonsignor up there battling with him. Yeah, you know, you know, Bonsignor's M.O. through these races, if he's really been good about saving his tires and his car seems to get faster. And you got to remember, I believe we're going to see everybody make a pit stop today, and I think that'll be a turning point as well. How good your car is as it starts to wear that right rear tire is going to be important as we watch young Chase Dowling. There have been times when that car, the 15, has been spectacular this year. Chase sits in third. He's done a great job. Chase Dowling, young man, finished second uh, in points. Uh, again, had a big year for him. There's Bonsignor in the 51. Whoa, whoa, that was close right there. Sure was. Lutz behind him. And the 85 car, Ron Silk. And then man that started on the pole, Williams in the 21. Here's the new champ. Really can see the suspension work well on these cars, Ralph, as they jump, you know, from lane to lane over the black, they bounce up and down, and you watch the guys, as I said, uh, and what's really neat about an open-wheel car is you can watch them move around a lot. And I love the in-car shots because do you see what the drivers see? Right now, Bonsignor only sees the back of Silk's machine, unless he can get to the inside here and make a pass. A lot of purple in his view for now. Yeah. Here's the battle for the lead. Still no change there, but Kobe peeking around. Yeah, and as the laps go on, the tire pressure's change, tire temperature's change. The guys will search around to find an area where their car works better, and it looks like Ryan Priest has done that. Ryan Priest, as we said, getting ready to move on to the Cup Series and become a next-gen star there. Hi, I'm Ryan Priest, driver of the number six Riverhead Raceway TS Hauler Modified. You know, I, I would say I race because I love the race. Uh, it's what I grew up watching people do, and, and that's what I want to do. I'm not just trying to get to, to the Cup Series and then just forget about everything. Uh, you know, I respect short track racing because I know how difficult it can be to get to the racetrack. It's not just about driving. It's the whole package that it is to get there. But, um, you know, I would say that by me going and racing Xfinity Series and then coming back and racing Modifieds, it helps bring attention to all these other drivers that are doing it also. I'm Ryan Priest, and that's your NASCAR Next Gen profile. I think the same way we see drivers like Kyle Larson and Christopher Bell go back and run sprint cars and midgets, I think we're going to continue to see Ryan Priest back here in the Modifieds, even though he's becoming a NASCAR Cup Series driver. Well, I hope so, and because I think it's great for a series like that. Like, there's a guy who got a shot, made the best out of it, and now he's got himself a cup ride. So we'll be cheering for him all the way, and it gives these other young guys, like we're seeing with Chase Daly and Justin Bonson, York, a chance to know that they can make the show. Andrew Kraus here fighting with Summers. Got my favorite number on that uh, Andrew Kraus car. You like 24, huh? Yeah, there's just something about that number. Oh, I wouldn't have thought that, but okay. Looking inside. Whoa, oh, hang on, yeah. Andrew. That's what's nice about those modifieds. Boy, look at that thing bouncing on Summers as he went down towards one. You see Summers using a little bit higher line, Kraus trying to use a little bit lower line, and that might have been why he got a little bit sideways. Uh, Summers using that higher line is probably not putting as much wear on his right side tires as Kraus is if he, as he drops down. Well, here's Priest. Kobe seems to have dropped off a little bit, Derek. You're absolutely right. He has a commanding lead over the rest of the field. But this might be one of the few times that we see Ryan Priest racing a modified for the future because he's going cup racing next year. He ran a partial schedule this year, winning two races, but also racing the NASCAR Xfinity Series, winning a race at the Bristol Motor Speedway, which also garnered him a ride in the Cup Series next year, driving the number 47 car for JTT Darn Racing. 
I could see him running the modified at Bristol, for example, and maybe at New Hampshire when it works out with his schedule, just yeah. like we see Ryan Newman do. Absolutely. You know, and again, it, it, uh, it it's something I think is great for short track racing, and it gives so many guys still an idea that they can do it. You know, that you can go through the NASCAR short track series and work your way, earn your way up to the big show, and, and I am really excited to see him come up. Approaching halfway on this one, Ray. Yeah, and there's that 44. That's a really famous number there at Thompson's. We watched Bobby Santos. Santos, a five-time winner here at Thompson. Sure would love another one this season. As usual, Santos has been in the mix quite a few times. Yeah, and we're coming up on halfway here, Ralph. It's going to be time to make some tire decisions if the caution flag comes out. Well, Kobe's car was right behind our race leader, Priest, for quite a while. But he slipped back now. And Derek, not only is he dealing with the 44 Santos, but he's buried in traffic. It's a little bit different of a look for Doug Kobe in that number two machine this week. He has pink numbers on the car, and the car is adorned with all the pink ribbons. Those pink ribbons are donations that were made to the Baptist Hospital Cancer Center in Norwich, Connecticut. Ryan Spalding is one of the crew members on the number two car of Doug Kobe. His wife, Rebecca, is a, cancer, is a breast cancer survivor. So being that Breast Cancer Awareness Month is this month of October, they wanted to get involved in a great program, so Doug Kobe put a little pink on his car this week, and he's got a whole bunch of ribbons on that car with a bunch of cancer survivors' names on it. Well, October is a big time to raise the awareness of cancer and what is being done to fight that battle. Doug Kobe uh, doing his part, as the majority of the sports world does throughout the month of October. Nice, nice job by Doug and his team. And Ralph, something's missing from here. We have not talked about Justin Bonsignor in quite a while. No, he is uh, not in the mix right now for the race win. So far, it's been all about Priest, who has a healthy lead over the rest of the field that's trying to snatch away that top spot. But Bonsignor, as you can see, on our timing and scoring, back in sixth. He's going to have to put that champagne bottle and trophy down and, and, and get busy here if he's going to come up and challenge. We see Chase Dowling uh, come rolling to a stop there. Is that is he coming out? Pit? No, he's... Yeah, he's wow. on the front straightaway, and that could bring out a caution. I don't think he's going to make it off the racetrack. Yeah, there's the caution. All right, crew chief, what do you do? Oh, boy, I'm going to tell you what. If I'm... Uh, if I'm the front guys, I'm coming. If I'm fifth or sixth, I might stay out and hope for another caution. It depends. Uh, again, look like uh, our guys got a lot of cars a lap down. I might chance it and put tires on a little bit later and see what happens. Well, I think if you're Ryan Priest, you're probably pretty happy right now, huh? Yeah, I think if you're Ryan Priest, uh, he he may or may not pit. I really think whoever puts tires on is going to win this race. But again, I could be wrong. Well, here comes Priest. We'll see. And Kobe and Santos and the rest. Looks like McKennedy coming, too. I guess if you're behind Priest, you pretty much have to do whatever he does at this point. Yeah, again, depending on how many tires they're going to give you, you can come back in and get it, get uh, get some more. But we'll see. What do you, what, uh, you think Derek's got down there for us? Well, let's find out. Down trackside we go to an active pit lane, Derek. A lot of confusion down here in the number six pit of Ryan Priest. They had a tire that they were going to put on the right front. They're going to opt to throw it on the right rear. They're also looking at the issue on the left front corner of the car. They think something might be broke. Jeff Priest, who is the crew chief for this car, is looking at it right now, trying to assess what issue might be amiss on that six car of Ryan Priest, but they only were able to get one right rear tire on the car in that pit stop. I am stunned to hear that they thought there was something wrong with that car because it sure didn't look like it. I'm going to tell you, Ralph, he took a heck of a hit at Oswego with something broken in the front end. I'd be looking. Yeah, that's a great point, Ray. Might feel a little bit gun shy about that. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Thompson, Connecticut, where Justin Bonchenor brought the championship trophy for the final race of the year. Didn't get off to a good start for Timmy Salamino. In fact, it's been a frustrating year for him all the way through. Brings out the first caution. Tough day for Herb Myers as well as the Southern Star comes north for another one. 
Brian Priest has dominated the day, but he's been a little bit concerned about an issue at the front of his car. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, he would. He took a heck of a hit at, at uh, Oswego, so hopefully there is nothing wrong in the front of the car. And we talked about, that we didn't talk about, Justin Bonsignor, and look who's up front. Bonsignor, the only other driver to lead a lap here so far today as we go back to green. Ryan Priest had doubled back down pit road while we were away at break. Again, they're looking at that front suspension. That's why he lost the lead. And here's Kobe all over the backside now, Bonsignor. Yeah, and absolutely the smart and the safe thing to do. You know, you've got to listen to drivers. Something doesn't feel right up there. You've got to have a look at it. These modifieds are extremely fast, and I'm going to tell you those walls are extremely hard. 16th and final race of the 2018 season. Like Goodale got wide, and a lot of people go by him. Yeah, easy to slide up uh, into the speedy drive, the dust, the marbles up there. You've got to slow those things down. Swanson goes by an old blue now, number three. Here's Myers with, after having that flat tire issue, fighting back. Really doing a great job in, in Eddie Harvey's car. You know, he came up north, did a great job up at Loudon, and now having a great run here at Thompson. Fourth time they have raced here at this track this year, having battled here in April, June, and August, and now finishing out the year in October. We watched the 51 and the two battling. You know, what a great season. And, and super, again, congratulations to Justin Bonson, your Ken Massa, Ryan Stone, that whole team. Just a, an awesome, totally dominated the season and made you and I look kind of off with our picks. He <laughs> sure did. <laughs> But what a great job as we as we slick out the back of his car now going back inside with the champ. He makes it look easy. And again, throwing a shout out to his owner who, who supplies certainly the, the money to do it. But, you know, from crew chief to crew chief, I want to say congratulations, Ryan Stone. Awesome car all year. Didn't really break as handled perfectly at a lot of racetracks. So uh, hats off to that whole crew. Right now, they're a little concerned about two things. Doug Kobe and Dave Sapienza. Back here is Priest. Not sure what the issue was or what they were concerned about with that front suspension on the car. Again, we see Bonson, you are taking a little bit higher line. Doug Kobe just trying to look under him, see if he can get a wheel down there. Inside the final 50 laps. Brady, you pretty much have what you have from this point forward, or would you pit one more time depending on where it comes? Well, if I didn't have what I wanted and the caution came out right now, I wouldn't be afraid to go in. You'd still have enough laps to get uh, to get back through, I think. But if you got inside of 25 laps, you pretty much got what you got. But if I'm one of those two cars that are leading this race and I feel that good, um, I, I'm going to stay out. You know, Doug Kobe's car seems to be a little bit stronger. He knows that he's going to have to get down uh, and underneath of Bonsignor. Bonsignor's not going to give up that top there, but Doug Kobe's got, uh, got some pretty close company there now as, as we look a little bit further back to Craig Lutz and Ronnie Silk. Another good battle inside the top five. And Silk on the drive off the corner. When Derek, he's got a fast race car, just not able to complete the pass just yet. Ronnie Silk runs in the top five right now. As a matter of fact, he's the only Troyer car in a sea of LFR cars in the top five. After talking with him earlier this week and asked him what his 2019 plans were, Ronnie Silk, of course, has won the NASCAR Wheeler Modified Tour Championship in the past, but he only ran a partial schedule this year with Kenny Stewart. And he said he really doesn't know what he's going to do next year. Probably just do the same thing. Run sporadically and try to win some races. Competitive every time he shows up, Ray. Yeah, hard to do when you run a part-time schedule. you really got to work hard at it, Ralph, because these guys are so competitive. They get so much better week to week. It's hard if you don't run a, a complete schedule to go out and win races. And here's Burt Myers, as we said, the star of the South up here, running some northern races at the end of the year, and he's really been flying. 
He's in that black number one. Whoa, Whoa that got close, didn't it? And yeah. here comes Myers inside of Lutz. Caution. Ken Hagee having problems. We'll get a look at Hagee's car. The 18 there. Don't see any damage. Might have been a, just a quick spin. Well, we got another look at it. Yeah, looked like something broke, as Ken Schrader would say. Traction. That's right. He was right there on the inside. That caution coming out around lap 111. The scheduled 150. Okay, yeah. And we got some takers on the pit stop. Good Dale and Santos headed down pit road as we head to break on NBCSN. Field back behind the Thompson Speedway pace car here at the Sunoco World Series 150. Bonsignor again has chosen the outside, which seems to be the certainly the preferred line there. You've got to have a strong car to dig, dig up off the corner to pass somebody that clear and get him clear here, Thompson. For the 142nd time, the series is racing here at Thompson. Oh, Lutz getting to the outside of Kobe. Sapienza right there as well. Ronnie Silk digging down on the bottom. He's going to try and make it work. He had a good line through there for his car, and it worked out. He's going to stay down there in one and two. Trying to get around Myers and Sapienza. Priest had those problems, made two trips to Pitt Road, and Ray, that car has just never been the same. No, it, he was pretty sharp, you know, up front. Back there in traffic, it's a little bit harder when you can't run your, your line, but uh, you know, hats off to Ronnie Silk. That's what you get for not running a full schedule when you say, the heck with it. He was going for wins. Had he dive-bombed and made that move, he'd have been about third right now, but uh, he was willing to go for it and lost a, lost a few spots. Tate Champions in that 36. I'd love to get that first career win here. He's got a pretty quick race car today. And again, as we move back through the field there, really impressed with Burt Myers. You know, these guys that he's running with run Thompson a lot, and Burt does not get to do that, spending most of his time down in the south, but uh, doing a great job, did a great job up at Loudon on the one-mile track. Now here, Thompson, five-eighths mile on the faster tracks and modifies run, doing a great job. For a guy who hasn't spent a lot of laps here, what would be the hardest thing to learn about going fast at Thompson? I think that you can overdrive getting the corner entry at Thompson a good bit, and you've got to get rotated in the center to get a good job, uh, a good drive off. And, you know, for him to adapt and, and do as well as he has here, pretty impressive. The Kennedy in the 7 and Y, closing in the red machine. I believe the 7 car was one of the cars that, that pitted in... Uh, and put some rubber on so he's probably going to come through these guys pretty good because he'll be able to work he'll be able to work and stick on the bottom uh, if he's got that new rubber on here's kobe looking inside laps are winding down a little bit if he wants to make a charge for the win he's got to get to second pretty soon if he's going to pass greg lutz on the bottom he's got to get it done because sapienza and silk are right on him now At first, I thought maybe he was being held up a little bit, but then when he couldn't get the job done, I think it shows you just how fast Lutz really is right now. Yeah, he's doing a good job, and Silk will not give up that bottom, and he's making it work. Uh, he got by Sapienza there on the bottom. A little loose coming off that corner, but let's see if he can run down and get by uh, uh, Kobe and Lutz. Oh, Kobe a little sideways off the corner there. Got 50 laps or so on these tires. These guys not afraid to use the throttle today. Yeah, and they're going to have to get those tires to last another 25. And there's our champion, and he's got his champagne bottle in the cup holder, and he's just cruising. <laughs> just as fast as he's been all year. Well, 
Well, that's pretty much the way his year has been. Just incredible the performance Bonsignor and crew have put together. Seven wins in 15 races this year. No other driver in 2018 with more than two. Yeah, it, it really amazing when you when you think about that, that you've won basically half of the events that they've held. Oh, we got caution. Caution. Looking like Walter Sutcliffe Jr. involved in the number 78. Taking off under his own power. Little spin there, no harm, no foul. Yeah, Get not that grass sure how he the got tires. there. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get everybody lined up. Getting late in the afternoon here, Ray. Yeah, and again, that presents a little bit of a problem if you can't keep your heat in the tires. Justin Bonsignor looking for one more checkered flag. Let's see if we can get it done after this. Looks like we will have about 20 laps to go on the Sunoco World Series 150 when we go back to green. Bonsignor has got the outside preferred lane, but he's got Ronnie Silk on him, which puts Silk back in a position to see if he can get by Lutz and put some pressure on Bonsignor. Let's see. Well, a little tight there. Kobe Meyer back in about fifth. Priest now on the outside. On the outside of Lutz. All of a sudden, he's creeped back into the storyline. Priest to third. Here comes Kobe. Looking for fourth. Can you imagine, if Bonsignor wins today, he will have won half of the 2018 season races. What an incredible, certainly a season to remember. Switch chassis manufacturers got involved with a new crew chief, and it's just been magic. Oh, oh, Sepienza. Boy, that's a big hit. Yeah, got pushed up and loosed up there, and there was just, you know, that just gives you an idea of how fast these cars are going. See, you've got just tapped up a little bit, got loose going in, got loose getting in the corner there, up into the loose stuff, no traction. Yeah, he was battling with McKennedy there. And the race is staying green, Ray. As I said, it, it's easy to get loose getting in here. You know, you're on the brakes, you're trying to turn, trying to stay ahead of the guys as we, we uh, see them. And they, they have stayed green. Now 15 laps to go now as Myers looks inside of Anthony Nocella. Whoa! Oh, he was looking, but he was looking pretty close. He was like looking to hit, get him out of the way. <laughs> that's what that's what those nerf bars are. Yeah, and, and you know, Bert, that was a little Bowman Gray move. It's a, it's 100% legal of Bowman Gray to nerf bar somebody. Little madhouse move. Just behind Myers, Goodale and Santos squabbling over eight. And that's a couple of the cars we saw try and take a late pit stop. And let's see if they can come back through, Ralph. Feel like maybe it was a little bit late for them, but we'll see. Swanson in the three. You know, they were battling McKennedy earlier, and now he's kind of pulled away from this group. Yeah, all pitted around the same time, but th they just weren't able to negotiate the traffic as good as uh, McKennedy in the seven. Coming down to 10 to go here, Ralph. Good deal with four top fives this year in that 58. That 58 j just doesn't look right going through the corner. I don't know if he's got a spring or a shock problem, but you see how, uh, you know, I don't know, it may be on a coil-bound setup or a bump stop or something. It just seems to be chattering through the corner pretty bad. You know, when you run the, you know, the, the coil-bound setup or on a bump stop type deal, if you don't get that right, it, uh, it can make for a long day. Well, and late in the race here, things not going right for Doug Kobe. He's... Looks like now outside of the top five. John McKennedy having a good run though, Derek. The seven looks pretty quick. Another one of those drivers wanting to finish his season right is that number seven machine of John McKennedy. He 
Brooks just inside the top 10 right now, and they had a very tough year this year. They won the opener at the Myrtle Beach Speedway, but after that, they were just bad luck started plaguing that number seven machine. It's a mechanical problem to getting involved in incidents on the racetrack this year. They weren't able to put together the consistency that they wanted, but they came into this race today, wanting to finish strong in the NASCAR Women Modified Tour 2018 season. You can have all the right go-fast parts on your ride, Ray, but if you don't have luck, it does you no good. No, you've got to have that. Uh, you've got to have that, too. But I've always found that uh, when you make those go-fast parts work right, you can make your own luck. So uh, Tommy Baldwin, our, our, uh, certainly our, our guest commentator for when I'm out getting my shoulder rebuilt and <laughs> sits in for us. But, uh, you know, again, that car has had speed, but they've just not been able to capitalize on it week after week. Yeah, not able to capitalize on the bottom groove, too, to put Lutz away. you got to be strong on that bottom there. you, you got to be really strong to make a pass on, on the bottom there at Thompson. That's why I was so impressed with what, uh, what Ronnie Silk was doing there. Five to go. Got him that time. Yeah, the, I'll tell you what, looking at that, the old place is getting bumpy. It's, a, it's important uh, to have those cars sprung and shocked properly. If you watch uh, bouncing across those lanes where you see the dark to the, the light gray, uh, cars are bouncing around a good bit. Yeah, but I don't want to hear you say that, you know, our word, repave. No, 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 I wouldn't say that at all. <laughs> you know, it's just some of the setups that they run in these cars right now, the, the shocks and spring combination, so critical. Hey, all of a sudden, McKennedy's putting it together. Gets around Priest, who cuts down inside, gets a little loose. Priest says, you're not, not, I'm not gonna, make, not gonna make it that easy for you. Looking at two laps remaining after this. Oh, oh Lutz. Craig Lutz. Wow. Up against the wall. So we've seen Lutz and Dowling now just get a little bit out of the groove and get up against that fence there. We're going to stay green. You get in that loose stuff, it's like ice. You cannot turn that car with all of the rubber and debris up against that wall. And Silk making a run at Bontignor with two to go. Gained a little bit on him through the corner there, but Bonsignor's car, Bonsignor's car just drove off so smooth. John McKennedy going to make an interesting coming across here with one to go. Here he comes. He won the season opener. Can he win the season finale? Final lap of the year here at Thompson. McKennedy with a run down the backstretch. Looking inside. Takes Silk wide. Justin Bontignor will win the Sunoco World Series 150 as he claims his eighth of 16 races in 2018. What a phenomenal season. What a phenomenal season. Half of the races there that that car has won. What a run for Bontignor. His 12th top five, his 15th top 10. We'll hear from the champ right after this. This is Frank. Well, it's been a great afternoon of racing here at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. The sun is headed down. The racing season is over for the Modifieds. One more driver to crawl out of the window, and it's Justin Bonsignor, Derek. Oh, well, here he comes. Justin Bonsignor. 2018 NASCAR Wheeling Modified Tour Champion. <laughs> We're going to step right in here. A little bit of a balancing act for you, but wanted to throw some names out there for you. Steve Park, Doug Covey, Mike Stefanik, yourself. You've all swept here at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. What does that mean to you? It means the world, you know. That's uh Three of the best in our series, uh, you know, two of them made it very far, and Doug is rewriting history in our series as we speak. So it's a little redemption. He actually beat me that year to do the sweep with two to go. So, uh, you know, we had one goal in mind all weekend. That was to come here and try and win the race. We had nothing else to lose. We could race hard. We could be aggressive with our strategy. And uh, just unbelievable. Hella far. Phoenix Communications, 51 today. Ryan Stone brought another bullet. Guys killed it on pit road again. Got us out from sixth to first. And, um, you know, when you get the lead, it just it makes it that much easier to save your tires and, and, you know, manage the race. And our car was really good at the end and just uh, managed the gap and hope for no yellows, and we got it. Such a dominant year this year. What can you do for 2019 to top this? Uh, 
win all of them, but I, you know, <laughs> this racing game's a really hard sport, and we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna rest on this. We're gonna work hard over the winter to try and get better. Um, these guys are gonna keep working hard to catch us, just like we've been working hard to catch them for a bunch of years. So, um, you know, we're gonna have to stay hard over the winter, stay hungry, keep these guys happy, and keep them coming back. And um, you know, I'm excited. I wish we were going racing somewhere else next week. Justin Bonsignor closes out the year with a sweep here at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. All those race wins and dominant performance at Thompson. Boy, the, the accolades for 2018 just continue to pile in. Credit to John McKennedy, though. He started the year off great with the win in Myrtle Beach and finished strong with the second year. Yeah, really made this show exciting. And again, uh, you know, I, I look at Timmy Salamito and say, hey, those guys got to keep their chin up and, and dig back out. We know that he's had speed, and I think he's going to be right back in the thick of things. You know, all the way back to Chase Dowling, who had a tough day, but congratulations to him. Second in points this year. Back down to Derek one more time. Uh, Tracks on. Well, John McKennedy enjoys an end to his season in 2018, finishes second, just nipped Ronnie Silk on the last lap, and was it a case where the car just came alive too late because it looked like you really started coming on at the end? Yeah, really, it was just a great pit call with Tommy. We had another tire left in the pits, so like 30, 40 laps to go, we said, come on in, we threw another right rear on, and I don't know, restarted like 12th and was able to march the way back up to the front. Overall, great weekend. We were pretty much a top five car all weekend. Ran top five most of the race. Uh, great way to end the season. She came really close from getting another win. We just had a real bad streak there. Some bad luck throughout the summer. And big thanks to Tommy, all the guys. Again, nice way to end the year. And uh, hopefully we can do it again next year. Tell us about the battle between you and Ron Silk. I mean, he had second for the longest time, and you just got him on the white flag lap. How'd you get past him? Yeah, it was tough, you know. Ronnie's a good driver, a lot of experience. Uh, I just had to set it up going into one up high and get a good run off of two. You know, and I was able to do the big dive bomb into three and clear him off of four and, you know, get that second place. So, felt good. Wish we had a, wish we had a few more laps, though. I think we, we had a car that could have won just a few laps too short. John McKennedy bookends his 2018 season with a win and a second place. Well, let's take a look at those final point standings. Monsignor, 95 over Dowling, who had a terrible day today. And Kobe ends up hanging on for third with Salamito having his problems. Yeah, and Craig Lutz, a great year to finish in fifth spot right there. Hats off to him. Ronnie Silk, part-time throughout the season, had a good run today. Well, Ronnie Silk and the number 85 started to mount a charge in the late stages of the race, but was it a situation where you think you ran out of time? Yeah, I think not so much time. I, me and Justin, he Justin was a tick better than I was. My spotter was giving me lap times. Once in a while, I would run a few hundredths better than him, but he was definitely a little better. And then, um, you know, I think John McKennedy came with a little bit fresher tire, and if there were a few more laps, I think Justin would have been in trouble too because he was really going. But, um, you know, we had a good car all weekend. We practiced well, raced well um, in the top five most of the day, so it's a good way to end the year. You guys race sporadically throughout the year. You don't usually do a full schedule, but every time you do run, you're always a threat to win. Is there any plans or anything in the works for next season? Yeah, I mean, I'll probably be back driving for these guys next year. We haven't sat down and really made a plan yet. We figured we'd get through this year, but um, it's good to end on a good note and build towards next year. Ronnie Silk with a podium finish. Well, that was the season finale for the Modifieds. Coming up next here on NBCSN in a few days, the season finale for the NASCAR k and Pro Series West Championship. They'll close out their year. Kern County Raceway Park out in Bakersfield. Another great venue. You can see it Thursday, November 1st, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Well, Ray sure had a lot of fun sitting by again for another great season of Modified. Ralph enjoyed it too, and uh, hopefully we get to do it again, but always love watching the Modified races. For Derek Pernisiglio and Ray Evernham, I'm Ralph Sheen. We sure hope you've enjoyed the 2018 NASCAR Wheeland Modified Series season here on NBCSN. Congratulations to our race winner and the new champion for 2018. Here he is, Justin Bonsignor. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy.